Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how you can use Packer to easily create Windows Virtual Machines. So the first thing you're going to want to do when getting started with Packer is head on over to packer.io slash downloads and then you're going to go ahead and download it for the operating system that you're going to use Packer on. I'm using Windows so I'm going to download it for Windows. And while that's downloading you might also want to check out this link here for a tutorial on getting started with Packer. I'm going to click it here so we can quickly review some of the things we're going to do. So as you can see, they have a few tutorials on getting started with Packer, and this is a good reference for what we're going to be doing in this video. So let's review what they have here. The first thing is, is they want you to install Packer, and that's what we're doing right now. We're downloading the Packer executable, and then we're going to put this somewhere on our system. The next thing we're going to do is build an image. And basically what this is going to be is a JSON file that has all the parameters that we need. I have Windows images pre-built on my GitHub in the description below and we're going to be using that to create a Windows 10 box. The next thing is provisioning. So you can set up your Windows boxes to have software pre-installed on it. So if you need particular applications or anything on your virtual machines, you can add it into your image JSON file. And then when you go ahead and build your image, all those applications are going to be available on it. And then once we have our JSON file ready, we're going to use Vagrant to actually create the virtual machine. You can also use other providers like VMware, but in this tutorial, we're going to be using Vagrant. So let's go ahead and get started. My download has completed. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And as you can see in this zip file, all it contains is a single executable file named packer.exe. We're going to hold on to this for now. And in the meantime, we're going to clone a GitHub directory where we're going to extract this file to. So I have a Windows terminal open here and the next thing I'm going to do is clone a repository that has all my Windows images in it and it's going to have Windows 10, Windows 7 as well as a bunch of different Windows Server templates. So I'll start off with a git clone and then I'll put in the repository name. Now this repository name is in the description below if you're following along and it's going to clone pretty quickly because these are all just text files. The next thing we're going to do is hop into that directory. So I'll go cd packer windows and then let's see what's in the directory here. And you can see there's a bunch of templates as well as JSON files. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to open this up in Explorer and pull it over and this is where I'm going to extract my packer executable to. So I have the Packer executable and I just bring it over into the same directory. Now you don't have to do it this way. You can have Packer installed anywhere on your system where your path can reach it. I find it's easier just to keep everything in the same directory. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this all up in VS Code. So I'll go code and my VS Code instance will pop up. And we're going to have a look at some of these files. So today we're going to be building a Windows 10 image. And if we have a quick look in this file, basically these are all the settings for the virtual machine. Now you don't have to understand all this. Just be aware that this is basically infrastructure as code, as we like to call it. And if you need to tweak any parameters, this is the file that you would need to do it in. Another thing I would like to point out is there's builders in this file. So you can see in the JSON formatting, it says builders and then up at the top we have a VMware version and then below we have a VirtualBox version. So just be aware if you are modifying these files there's different builders for different hypervisors and you want to make sure that you're changing the builder for the hypervisor you're going to be using. In this tutorial we're going to be using Vagrant to provision a VirtualBox machine so we're interested in the VirtualBox builder. Now if we scroll down we can see a few more things in this file. The next thing coming up here is provisioners. So this is the post installation task and this is what we're actually going to modify if we want to install our own software. I'm going to show you how we can modify this to install the package management tool Chocolatey which I like to have on all my Windows boxes. But before we do that let's finish looking at this uh, JSON file. The next thing that comes up is post processors and you can see it references the Vagrant template file for Windows 10 and it's just another file that's in this directory 
And if you look at it here, this is basically the Vagrant virtual machine where it's setting the number of CPUs, the memory size, things like that. So if you want to tweak anything on like the Vagrant provider side, this is the file that you would tweak. Let's go back into that JSON file now. And the last thing you can see is the ISO URL. So this is basically going to download.microsoft.com and downloading Windows 10. Now this is a evaluation version that's going to be active for 90 days. So if you want to use it beyond the 90 days, you're going to have to find out how to do the licensing. And that about sums up the JSON file. Let's go ahead and make a quick copy of this. And then I'm going to paste here and I'm going to rename it to Windows underscore 10 Choco. So we have our new file. We're going to keep everything the same except for we're going to go down to provisioners and add some additional functionality to install Choco. All right, so we're under provisioners now and we can see provisioners is a list of dictionaries here. So I'm going to do a comma and add another dictionary here, which is just the curly brackets. And then within the dictionary, I'm going to say type PowerShell. And then the next parameter is going to be called inline. And this is basically the command that PowerShell will receive as well as the arguments. So inline is actually going to be, so inline is going to be a dictionary. And then here I'm going to paste in the command to install Chocolatey. And I just grabbed this command from chocolatey.com. It's right here. I just went copy and then I pasted it in here. Basically it's setting an execution policy to allow external applications to be installed. And then it's running the Choco installer PowerShell script. So that looks good to me. Let's go ahead and get started on creating our virtual box since I think that's what most people are interested in. So I'm going to hop back into the terminal here. So I'm back in the terminal here and I'm ready for Packer to build my image. So I'm going to go Packer and then I'll go build windows underscore 10 underscore Choco and hit tab, enter. And what this is going to do is read that JSON file and create a box file. Now you're probably going to notice that you get a few errors and I can see a few right now and basically it's VMware errors and that's because I don't have VMware installed on my computer I only have VirtualBox but that's fine because I just want a VirtualBox one created. Now another thing that I should mention is this command actually takes a very long time to complete. And the reason it's going to take so long is first it needs to go out to Microsoft.com and download that ISO file, which is about three and a half gigs or so. But after it does that, it needs to actually build the image. Now all of this is going to take some time and it's all going to depend on the speed of your internet connection as well as your computer. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this running and I'm going to come back in an hour or so and it should be complete. So I'll go ahead and speed up the video for everyone. One eternity later. All right, so that is completed. It took around three hours or so to complete. So not the quickest process in the world, but it looks like everything completed fine. Again, we got these VMware errors, but since we're building this for VirtualBox and not VMware, that's fine. What we're interested in is that this VirtualBox file got created. So we can see a Windows 10 VirtualBox.box file was created. And if I search the directory, we can see that it's here. Now what we need to do is add this box file to Vagrant. So I'm going to run the command Vagrant box add, and I'm going to give it the name Win10, and then I'm going to paste in that box file. And this is going to make the Windows 10 image available in Vagrant. And you're going to notice that this command runs quite a bit quicker than our last one, so don't worry about that. But it still does take a few minutes. Okay, so the box was added to Vagrant. Now I want to go into a separate directory and create my Vagrant environment. So I'm going to go back a directory and I'm going to make a new directory here called Windows 10. And you can call this whatever you want, but Win10 will work. And then once we're in here, I'm going to go Vagrant init Win10. 
And this is going to build our Vagrant file, which basically just references our image. And we can see that if we open it up in Visual Studio Code here. And you can see that the Vagrant file is very simple. It's just saying config.vm.box equals win10, and that win10 is the box that we added to Vagrant. So I'll go back into the terminal. And now I'm just going to go Vagrant up. And this is going to build the virtual machine. And the best way to visualize what's actually happening here is to just pull up the VirtualBox GUI. And you can watch it there. I have a couple other environments here. But a new one should be showing up that's called Win10. So this command does take a little bit of time to run since it is creating a new virtual machine from that image we created. So give it about 10 minutes or so. I'm going to go ahead and cut to the end. Alright, so the virtual machine finished provisioning there with Vagrant and I can see that it's up in VirtualBox. So I'm just going to hit show here now and this is going to get me into my Windows virtual machine now. And username is Vagrant and password will be Vagrant since that's what we set up in the build parameters in that JSON file. And now let's try pulling up a command prompt. And I'm going to type choco. And we can see Chocolatey was able to install using that provisioner that we created. So Chocolatey obviously isn't currently part of the default Windows image. But since we created that provisioner, we can see that it's installed now. And you could basically set that provisioner to however you wanted to make sure that all your software gets installed. Anyways, I'm going to leave it there. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you want to see more tutorials on DevOps tools like Vagrant and Packer, please hit the subscribe button. And I hope to see you all in the next video.